Hey everyone, Josh here with Fresh Start Customs, and today we're going to be talking about the terminology of lasers here. Um, I've got examples for this. We're going to be talking about Curve. We're going to be talking about Photoshop and editing photos, um, and then basically everything on this list. I know it's easy to take all of this for granted if you've been working with lasers for a while now, but everybody who has just came in to the new uh, laser community here they don't know what any of this means and if you take a look back neither did you when you first started so I'm here to just go over the terminology in this video of what people are talking about when they say these terms that you may be reading in different groups so this will be mainly for brand new laser owners um, if you're a seasoned laser owner you may know all of this um, or you can stick around and you may learn something else new that I may show in this video um, but this is going to be mainly for brand new laser owners that want to learn all the terminology. I'll show a few examples in here, but each one of these I made an individual video for already, and I'll probably uh, point you in the direction of those as well. If at any point I don't clarify something, leave a comment down below, and I'll go ahead and clarify that, and we'll go from there. So uh, let's jump right into this. First up, we have the cut. As you can see, this line here is what's called a cut path. Um, it's just this line in Illustrator here. You may have it in different programs like WeCreate or Xtool software, but this is essentially a cut line. What that does is it cuts out whatever you're, uh, you have the line on. So let's take this circle for example. Once it's printed, it's going to look like this. It's going to cut out that circle there. So that's essentially what it's doing. All of these pieces are going to assemble and look like this here. Um, and then uh, the score line is essentially a cut line, but it will engrave just that line. It won't actually cut all the way through. So let me show you an example of that. So as you can see, I scored out this pandas offset here, which we're going to be talking about offset in just a second. And as you can see, if I pull him away, just the circle that falls out of here, this is the score line. So basically, this is a cut line that just engraves essentially. That's the best way that I can explain it. Um, and this is basically an easy way to engrave just a line itself super fast because it's going to be taking the direction of a cut. So it's going to go like this all the way around really quickly versus if you made this an engraving, it would go back and forth. And we're going to be covering engraving next. So an engrave is a fill, which would be this. Uh, this one on the left hand side here in Illustrator and then you'll have an option like that in your program and then when you have a fill it's gonna look like this this is the engraved panda here this black area and then as you can see around them is that red cut line I do all my cuts in red and all my scores in blue and all my engraves in black um, unless there's multiple of each in a in a file but you can line up the colors however you want. The colors don't matter as long as you have a fill for the engraves and then the stroke for um, the, the score or cut. And the stroke is just the outside line on the right hand side I was talking about. So next up we have an offset. So an offset is basically um, an extra gap from your inside design. So in this case it's just a cut of a square then the outside is offset. So uh, the better example of that is this panda here. As you can see that red line that was perfectly cut out all the way around him, um, that is an offset. There's a tool in Illustrator that can do this and hopefully will come in uh, your program as well depending on what program you have. But uh, we'll go ahead and draw a real quick star and show you that, um, that feature here. So as you can see, I have a star. It's currently a fill, so this is an engrave, even if it's a different color. We'll just make it black so it's not as confusing here. And then we can go to Object, Select Path, Select Offset Path. And as you can see, it got really big there. Um, you can make that as big or small as you want on an offset. Um, let's just make it 0 0.5 to make it really, uh, really large here. And then what we're going to do is turn that outside path that we just created into a cut line here. And as you can see, that offset our original star. So our original star was this small, and it offset that by 0.5 inches. So from here to here is 0.5 inches, from here to here is 0.5 inches. 
It's basically a perfect way to get a consistent um, cut line all the way around your item that you're creating. So hopefully that made sense. I do have an entire video, like I said before on that. You can check that out. Next up is slots and tabs. This one is super basic and super easy. I just wanted to add this just in case. But the slots are these little tiny uh, cutouts here. And then the tabs would be these uh, parts that stick out here. So if I take this leg off, for example, as you can see right there is a tab and this is the slot that it goes into. Or here's two tabs and these are the slots that it goes into. So if you're going to put it this way first, it would connect into those or if you're going to take this way and connect it into that. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. That's as basic as you can get. That's the easiest one, in my opinion. Next up is Kerf. This is the hardest thing that you're going to take time to learn. I've got an entire video with this spreadsheet on it that I go in depth on this. But essentially, what it what Kerf is, is the amount of material that gets destroyed in your slots and tabs uh, with your laser that goes around it. So if your laser path is this right here, it's destroying both sides of that line. Let's say this black line here, it's destroying both sides of that with the laser. And it's going to make your slots and tabs fit really loose if you don't adjust for it. Um, in that video, I show you how to start with the original and adjust for this to get all of these numbers here using this tool right here called a digital caliper tool. This is the most important tool you'll ever have as a laser owner is the digital caliper tool. So go ahead and look for one of those um, and watch that video called Understanding Kerf. Um, um, it's about, I don't know how long it is. It's a pretty long uh, video, but it goes very far in depth. This is something that you'll want to learn for sure. Next up is the invert. Um, this is going to be actually in Photoshop. Technically, you can do it here, but you can do it manually here where you go from black to white or etc. But it doesn't really matter in Illustrator, but in Photoshop for editing, the reason why I want to talk about invert is for like tiles, for example. So um, you can invert like colors just like you can in Illustrator where you pick a color here or you can go to um, image adjustments and then click invert once it's a... Uh, a rasterized image which we're going to talk about next but um, text isn't really what we're here for we're here for the uh, photos here so let me make this photo a little bit bigger so you can see it here um, and let's say what we want to do is we want to invert this but to get it ready for engraving we'll make it black and white first so we'll go to image adjustments and then black and white and then you'll see uh, like adjustment panel like this. So you can adjust different colors, whatever looks best for your engraving. Um, I did an entire video for the best looking engravings that you can get with um, black and white. So check that out as well. Um, but let's just say this looks good. We're going to click OK. So if you're going to engrave on wood, this may look great on wood as is in black and white. But if you're going to print on tile and then you're going to color the tile and wipe off the color, you'll want to invert this. So if you ever see somebody who says, hey, invert your image whenever you're trying to do on tile or um, some other type of material that they want you to invert on, all you got to do is come up to image, go to adjustments, scroll down here and click invert. It's going to look really weird in your program. But what this is going to do is this is going to engrave the opposite of what you want engraved and then all of that outside color is going to be filled in with that color that you wipe onto the tile and it's going to look really cool. So that's pretty much invert in a nutshell. It's super easy. Um, like I said, I did an entire video editing uh, uh, or a photo editing video on this. So check that out as well. And then lastly... We're going to talk about rasterized versus uh, vector images. So a rasterized image is just what we were using here. It's just a regular JPEG image that will import something like this. Um, it's You can see it's kind of grainy in there. Um, that is a rasterized image. It's like a JPEG or a PNG file. And those are uh, those are terminology for just uh, just an image itself. Um, hopefully, you know what a JPEG and G, uh, PNG file is. That is just basically just a photo. Um, and then a vector image is like this panda here. So 
A vector image can be scaled up as big as you want while holding shift here and it'll stay crisp and clean the entire time and you'll be able to edit like the um, the the uh, fill and the um, uh, stroke here so if you have an uh, like a rasterized image so let me go ahead and just pull that image over here if it'll let me so right here is a rasterized image um, as you can see I don't have that option to uh, edit like the fill and stroke here so the best you could really do with this is you could throw a, your own custom cut line around it so let's just say like a rectangle here and we're gonna turn that into a cut line versus a fill and now we have this rectangle around it and it'll cut out that squared image of that photo when you engrave it uh, I think I did a, an entire video on this as well that'll explain it a lot better than this video here I just wanted to show you guys quickly what the difference is your main goal is going to be getting a vector image like this that you can edit and you can scale up and down uh, basically infinitely without ever losing quality where it won't get grainy um, that is ultimately going to be your goal there um, and just check out all those other uh, videos on that but if anybody ever says if you have a rasterized image or a vector image if it's a, a, J, a JPEG or a PNG going to be rasterized if it is in illustrator like an svg file um then it's probably going to be a vector as long as it's editable uh, but as you can see you can pull in a rasterized image as well um and then next up i kind of skipped over this this is the svg pdf and ai files so these are going to be your main files that you use for your laser engraving this is just what you save your file as to upload to your laser so SVG stands for a scalable vector graphic. Um, that's essentially what uh, this is right here. It allows you to uh, scale it up, uh, scale it up and down, and that's what's called a vector. Um, now keep in mind with different lasers, when you upload an SVG file, if I save it in Illustrator and then you upload it using a different program like Inkscape, Inkscape this file could scale either down or up whenever you import it into your program so that's why a lot of people like to save it as a PDF file uh, what that'll do is it'll help lock in the correct settings no matter which program you open it with and then lastly an AI file is what we're using right now is uh, Illustrator any Illustrator file or AI file is um, what you'll use with this program and it should work perfectly fine with those programs. So that's pretty much it. I know I went super quick there. I didn't want to make the video too long. But I wanted to uh, get this out there for anybody who's brand new to lasers. And wanted to learn about all of these different um, features here. Or the terminology of it. And then like I said if you want to deep dive into one of these topics. Check out my um, YouTube channel. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. I do videos randomly on these different topics but I have done very in-depth videos on all of these topics before just check those out with a quick search if you need something just let me know down in the comments below I'll try and answer it other than that we'll catch you guys in the next one